Hey everybody, this is a problem on Coulomb's law. It's about the electrostatic force between two charges on a third charge, um, but it's in two dimensions. However, the forces are perpendicular, so that is going to simplify things. Let's get right to it. Three charges lie on a coordinate axis as shown. Charge one is at the origin and has a magnitude of plus 8.4 microcoulombs. Charge two is on the x-axis at x equals 5.5 centimeters and has a charge of negative 12.5 microcoulombs. Charge 3 is on the y-axis at x equals 8.0 centimeters and has a charge of plus 14.2 microcoulombs. Draw and label the force vectors on charge 1. Calculate the forces on charge 1 from charges 2 and 3 and find the magnitude and direction of the net force on charge 1. So uh, we know that forces act independently to find the net force. We just need to add up all the other force vector vectors that are acting. So let's take a look at our diagram. We have Q3 up here, Q1 down here, and Q2 over here. Uh, well, Q1 is going to feel a force from Q3, and it's going to be repulsive. So in green, I'm going to draw that force vector as a downward arrow. That's the force on 1 from 3. Point straight down. Q2 is uh, negative, so it's going to be attracted, there's going to be attractive force between it and Q1, so there's going to be a rightward force on Q1. That's going to be the force on 1 from 2. Those are our two force vectors labeled. Uh, that's part A. Now we need to find the magnitude of these forces. We know for any force by Coulomb's law, the electrostatic force is equal to K Q1, Q2 over R squared. So let's first find the force on 1 from 3. The force on 1 from 3. Uh, we plug in K, Q, Q over R squared. Our K value is always the same. It is 8.99 uh, times 10 to the 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Our Q values are the values of the two charges, the magnitudes of our two charges. It's going to be the magnitude of charge 1 and the magnitude of charge 3. So uh, charge 1 is 8.4 microcoulombs, so 8.4 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Charge 2 is 14.2 microcoulombs, or 14.2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And the distance is the distance between our two charges. Q1 is at uh, 0, Q3 is at 8 centimeters, so the distance is just 8 centimeters. Um, we need to convert that to meters, so that is 0 0.08 meters, and that's distance is squared. Then we get our force on 1 from 3. We get 8.99 times 10 to the 9, plug it into a calculator, times 8.4 times 10 to the minus 6 times 14.2 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0 0.08 squared. We get 168 newtons. And the direction is down, straight down. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for the force on 1 from 2. Uh, K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Q1 is still 8.4 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And Q2 now is negative 12.5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And the distance between Q1 and Q2, well, Q1 is at 0, Q2 is at 5.5 centimeters, so R is 5.5 centimeters, or 0 0.055 meters. And we square that distance to get our answer 8. 0.99e9 times 8.4e minus 6 divided by 0 0.055 squared to get, did I do something wrong? Yes, I did do something wrong. Let me recalculate that. 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times 8.4 times 10 to the minus 6 times negative 12.5 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0 0.055 squared. We get an answer of negative 312 
newtons, and that negative sign just means attractive. So we can write the magnitude, 312 newtons, and the direction, which is to the right, or in the positive x direction. So that's B. To find C, we need to find the magnitude and direction of the net force. Well, we know that the net force is just the vector sum of all the individual forces. Uh, F some of the forces, but it's the force vectors. So let's draw our uh, initial forces and connect them tail to tip. We have a downward force and a rightward force. This is the force on one from two. This is the force on one from three. And so our net force, which I'm gonna do in blue, points down and to the right. That's F net. We need to find the magnitude of that net force and we need to find the direction. I'm gonna use this theta here to find the direction. Um, the magnitude, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle. So F net is just going to be the square root of force 1, 2 squared plus force 1, 3 squared. That's the square root of 168 squared plus 312 squared. The magnitude of our net force equals 168 squared plus 312 squared to the point 5 gives me 354 newtons. And then the direction, theta, I'm just going to use inverse tan or arc tan of opposite over adjacent. So F12 over F13. So that's inverse tan of 312 over 168. 61.7 uh, degrees. So to sum it all up, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and sum it all up. Um, actually, yeah, sum it all up. The net force on 1 is equal to 354 newtons at an angle of 61.7 degrees. And we started from negative y and rotated counterclockwise. Counterclockwise from negative y. We could also write it as something like 29, uh, 29 degrees uh, below the positive x-axis, something like that. There's our answer. In summary, find all of your individual forces, find the vector sum to get the net force. That's all. Bye.